Hello, my name is Dror Regev and I will be giving this uh, tutorial about uh, input uh, stability analysis of common source LNAs. Uh, this tutorial is part of uh, the bigger uh, tutorial of uh, LNA uh, design as part of the RFCMOS design uh, seminar. Uh, this tutorial uh, will deal with stability after we have established some basis of understanding of the negative resistance uh, model. Analyzing uh, LNA stability, uh, we can look at the input impedance uh, and uh, just uh, treat the input here as the node where we uh, uh, look at the active uh, part, which is uh, this part of the LNA. The frequency determining part that was mentioned before when we talked about the negative resistance model uh, will be the uh, input match. So let's just uh, look now at the active part. And uh, uh, if we want to uh, calculate the impedance uh, or the input impedance to this uh, active part uh, of the LNA, we can use uh, simple Kirchhoff laws to uh, uh, find Z in as a V in uh, divided by uh, I in. And if we do so, uh, we find that uh, Z in uh, will equal uh, this uh, expression that we can see here. This is not a very, very nice expression, uh, but uh, let's look at the, um, uh, the values that we have there. So ZF is uh, basically the impedance of uh, CF, which is the feedback uh, resistor before we have uh, mentioned CGD. So uh, now we just assign it as uh, CF and uh, ZL will be the impedance of uh, the uh, load and uh, ZS is the impedance of the source and uh, all the other CI replaces CGS and GM is the GM that comes from the model. We get this uh, expression so far we, we don't know what to do with it but soon we will see that it becomes uh, very helpful when we analyze uh, the, the circuit. Before uh, we continue with the stability analysis of the input of the LNA, uh, we can go back one step and uh, go back to the case where C feedback or CGD uh, for the CMOS transistor equals zero, uh, just uh, to learn some, uh, some uh, properties or some conclusions that we can from the expression, the expression we just uh, developed for, uh, for ZD. So if we assume uh, that the C of uh, equals zero, Z in will be uh, simplified um, to this expression right here. And then uh, with this expression, uh, we can uh, uh, check the different cases. So the first case will be the ideal uh, common source. Uh, we just uh, put uh, ZS equals zero and we go to uh, the very known uh, input impedance of the capacitor, uh, CI or CGS in the uh, CMOS case. Uh, the other case that uh, we will uh, look at is uh, uh, ZS, the source uh, impedance uh, equals R. So if we just put a resistor there, uh, we will find uh, that Z in equals uh, this expression and we can simplify it to be this expression. And why is this uh, interesting at all? Because uh, what we find is uh, this expression has R, the resistance that we put in the source, and it also have one plus uh, GMR over uh, J omega uh, CI. And because usually GM uh, R uh, is, is a, a, a large number, uh, what we uh, got here is an increase in the input impedance. So this is a, a, a way usually analog designers employ to increase input impedance just by putting a resistor at uh, the source. So the, the resistor is really multiplied here by GM and divided by this number which it, at very low frequency is, is low and hence we get very very uh, high um, uh, input impedance. Very useful in analog design. Uh, another case we can check is the case that we tested before uh, just to make sure that we get the same results we developed when we 
looked at the input impedance. So we just verify we get the same results. And a, another very, very interesting uh, um, case will be replacing ZS uh, 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 with a capacitor or uh, putting a capacitor as a load. This is not a, a useful way to design, but uh, we get uh, in many circuits, as we will see later on, a parasitic uh, behavior that is very similar to this case. And that's why this case is, uh, is interesting. Um, and so in this case, what we find is even though CF or there's no CGD in the expression, uh, what we find is Z in has a negative uh, real part. And that we already know is uh, potential to stability issues. So um, we just went over these cases. They're interesting to, to understand. And uh, we find that um, uh, even with CF equals zero, we can get negative resistance. So we just need to, to make sure that we don't introduce uh, capacitance um, in the source and neglect the treatment of these capacitances. Now we go back to uh, our circuit, uh, our uh, CMOS uh, LNA circuit. And uh, now we, uh, we know that we used ZS as an inductor uh, to have both uh, input impedance and noise uh, matching. And uh, the load is usually inductive uh, because it doesn't uh, have a voltage drop on it, uh, a DC, and can resonate uh, output capacitances that will be here. Uh, so this is a, an interesting case. And it was analyzed before, but without CGD or without the uh, feedback uh, capacitances. And uh, we saw before uh, in the simulator, we found this uh, behavior. And in yellow here, we can see the real part of Z in. Now let's look at the expressions and see if they are uh, similar to what we find here. So if we take the uh, expression we got in the um, two slides before this slide for uh, input uh, impedance to this circuit. And we um, just uh, insert these impedances into uh, the expression. We find that we get a very, very nasty expression uh, that has a real part and a negative part. But let's worry first about the real part. And if we look at the real part, which is quite a, nasty, uh, we can find interesting uh, conclusions. Okay, so at the denominator, we have a positive denominator because uh, uh, the terms are squared. So we don't need to worry about the sign of uh, the denominator for this, uh, uh, for this time. Uh, but here, we can find that we have positive uh, factors multiplied by uh, these two Partnerses. And um, this is very, very interesting to, uh, to analyze because uh, this first term here is positive at uh, low frequencies. It's positive at this frequency, at low frequencies, because the capacitance and the inductance are very, very low numbers. And uh, if, if the frequency is low, this expression is very close to one. Okay. So at very low frequencies, all this is positive. However, we need to look at uh, this expression. And if we want the whole real part to be positive, we need to make sure that this expression will also be positive. And uh, to make this happen, uh, what we need to do is we need um, LS to be uh, high enough to, uh, um, to be multiplied by the, the ratio of the capacitances uh, and to still keep this whole expression positive. LL in our uh, previous example was much, much higher than LS because this is the, uh, the load uh, inductor. And uh, now we see that if we want the whole reel to be positive, 
we need to either have a low load inductance or a high uh, source inductance, which uh, is possible, but we know that the ratio between these two, LL and LS, uh, is uh, uh, important for the gain. So as LL grows or LS drops, the gain goes up. And this is an amplifier, we need to have gain. So we see that if we want to have a stable amplifier, we need to make sure that this is real, so the gain drops. So this is the first trade-off that we, uh, we need to account for when we design uh, such a circuit. So there's a trade-off here between gain and stability. And we will later on try to bypass this trade-off uh, by introducing a more uh, complete topology with the cascode transistor. But for now, we have a serious trade-off because if we don't make this uh, negative, if we don't make this uh, part positive, the whole reel will be negative. Now, what happens in uh, higher frequencies? Remember that we just assumed that this is uh, positive and very close to one. But of course, there's some resonance frequency here that after this part, uh, after this frequency, this part will be uh, negative. So um, we usually worry more about, uh, about uh, low frequencies, about stability in low frequencies, because uh, the quality factor of the inductors uh, and uh, um, the gain of the transistor drops in higher frequencies. So it's, it's, a, it's a bigger concern at, uh, at lower, lower frequencies. But we can see this behavior very, very well reflected here in uh, what we found here. Because we, we found that for this example, this, this part was negative at low frequencies. But at some point it became positive. That point is exactly the point where uh, this part became negative as well. And we got the multiplication two negatives and it, it uh, uh, became positive again. So again, just by analyzing a simple circuit with a CGD or C feedback, we can understand the behavior of real transistors uh, when we look at input impedance and stability. And uh, simple analysis, analytic analysis can be very helpful in understanding the parameters that really affect uh, the stability of this, uh, of this uh, LNA input. To complete the analysis of the LNA uh, stability or the common source LNA stability, uh, we also need to look at the imaginary part of ZD because there are two, uh, two conditions for oscillations to start. So we already looked at the negative part, uh, at the real part, and we saw it was negative for low frequencies. Uh, but there's another uh, imaginary part that we need to consider. So if we look at the imaginary part of uh, ZD, uh, this is the result that we get quite nasty, uh, but again, uh, we can get some uh, conclusions from, uh, from this expression. First of all, we see that uh, in, uh, in low frequencies, uh, all this uh, expression uh, is uh, positive, but we have a minus sign in front of it. So the whole expression uh, for imaginary of Z in will be negative. Uh, it was a sum to be capacitive, and we see that really uh, this, this uh, circuit is capacitive uh, at low frequencies. Now, of course, we have some resonances here. At some frequencies, it will not, uh, it will not stay uh, negative anymore, and it may change uh, the sign uh, twice, because uh, we can see two resonances here. But uh, we said that we are worried about low frequencies because uh, this is where we can get a negative resistance uh, at the input here. And uh, we get capacitive uh, imaginary and the source, okay, the source is uh, inductive. So uh, if 
the sum of the input resistance plus the, the real part of the LNA will be negative since the imaginaries are one uh, in, inductive and the other one is capacitive we can get the oscillations that we don't want to get. So uh, we must find a solution for the stability issues. Okay, to complete this uh, tutorial, uh, we need to look at uh, an example. Okay, because we went through all these expressions, all these explanations. Uh, it may be tiring uh, if we don't see that it's very, very important. So just to uh, uh, visualize the risk of not understanding these stability issues, uh, we have here an example that uh, was used before uh, with the same values, same parameters that were used before with a real transistor, okay, uh, not a simplified model. And we just uh, hook it up and look at the transient uh, dom uh, time domain transient uh, response of the circuit and uh, not surprisingly we find that uh, the circuit really oscillates so uh, we may have a good understanding why this circuit oscillates because we went through this tutorial uh, but also we see that uh, it is really crucial to understand this and to know how to prevent this uh, and of course this is not this is not an amplifier we have to improve it to make it an amplifier. Okay, uh, we have developed the expressions for a, a input resistance uh, with respect to LS, the source inductance. And here we have two examples with uh, uh, two different source inductances. And the top one, we have zero source inductance. So this is a classic um, common source and we look at the real part of um, the Z-in and uh, we find it has a large uh, uh, bandwidth of frequencies where this uh, uh, input impedance is negative and where we have potential stability issues. Uh, but we also saw in the expressions and now we can see in the simulation that if we take a high enough um, source inductor uh, the real part of the Z-in will become positive. And this is what we find here in a simulation on a real transistor. So uh, we really feel now that by analyzing simply uh, uh, simple schematic uh, circuits that include CGD, we can predict the behavior of real transistors and understand the behavior and understand how to improve stability of this circuit. Okay, in this uh, tutorial, we have analyzed the stability of a common source LNA through its uh, input impedance using the uh, negative resistance model. Uh, we have found um, that the impedance or the real part of the impedance can be made positive by increasing the source inductance or uh, reducing the load inductance uh, at low frequencies. And uh, we care more about low frequencies because this is where the transistors have higher gain and the uh, inductors have uh, higher quality factors. Um, but now we understand that by increasing LS or reducing LL, we damage the gain performance and we need to see uh, how to overcome this uh, trade-off. However, stability is crucial and we cannot uh, um, oversee it. Uh, it must be analyzed and I think it must be uh, well understood.